Thank you, Christina, and thank you very much to, to Comex to, for inviting me to do this presentation. It's an honor as well to be with my colleagues here. Um, I'm, I'm going to um, speak about Brexit in UK. I'm going to be um, giving a little bit of information as to the difficulties that the um, companies are um, basically going through in the UK. And obviously, that you could see their point of view, and that will affect obviously the um, imports from Spain and EU into the UK. Uh, just, just briefly to say, I've been uh, 25 years practicing uh, law in the UK uh, as a solicitor, so I'm working within uh, international trade as well. Just a bit of a background that probably everybody knows, but uh, just you know, to include it there that. Uh, UK left the uh, EU on the 1st of January 2021. Um, prior to that, the Trade and Cooperation Agreement, the TCA, uh, between the e UK and EU um, was signed in December 2020 <coughs> to govern the future trading and relationship, and that would allow the, for trade in qualifying goods between the UK and EU uh, without tariffs and, um, or quotas. Well, the agreement puts a number of uh, measures in place and um, to, to minimize the regulatory um, differences and encourage the international standards. But in, th that's in, well, in theory, this was supposed to, to avoid um, having the you know, businesses having to comply with a different set of rules, <laughs> UK, EU. That's in theory. Um, the, 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 the TCA has three main pillars, and the one that we are more interested here because of the uh, subject is the UK-EU you know, free trade agreement um, covering the economic and social partnership, environmental and fisheries issues. What I would like to um, give you some statistics um, because uh, you know, the, the, the point of view of the UK business is, is very interesting, I think. Uh, for you to know. And this is a recent survey of um, the British Chambers of Commerce for um, done on UK businesses and on, on, on the way that they are operating now, you know, and comparing before, uh, between before the um, Brexit and after Brexit. So basically they say that almost, almost two thirds of UK companies, 60%, uh, that they are basically trading with the EU, say that it's now more difficult to do so than before. Almost half of exporters disagree the Brexit deal is helping them grow sales. Two, two, sorry, two fifths, around 41% of uh, companies exporting under the Brexit deal say that they face difficulties adapting to its rules and buying and selling goods. And what is also very alarming is that um, the awareness of uh, upcoming changes in uh, trade rules and regulations being made by both EU and uh, UK was significant, significantly low, with around 80% of companies knowing no details of new regulations. So this is pretty alarming, considering that they are trading uh, between countries. Um, there have been many recommendations for the UK to try to agree um, to improve the UK-EU trade, and um, so it's still, it's still quite a lot to be done, and we're hoping that obviously there will be more agreements. Uh, what is clear, really, is that the UK government um, somehow realised that the, the, the trade supremacy that they, they were aiming to have um, on the contrary, it hasn't really helped, and it has made lots of UK businesses uh, gruggle, really. Um, the, the, main, the main challenge uh, associated with the exit uh, from the EU has been, and still is, probably navigating the transaction from the UA, EU, sorry, EU single market to any new arrangement. And I'm going to go through four of the main um, difficulties that from my own experience, the, the companies are having uh, after Brexit. The first one is yeah, the trade disruptions and um, UK EU uh, customs processes. So the agreement, the agreement, uh, the TCA uh, addresses regulatory barriers to trade in goods between the UK and EU. 
while allowing both parties the freedom to regulate goods in the way most appropriate for their own market. So in this respect, obviously, the, the UK government has been facing border controls for goods um, imports from the year from 2021. In particular, many of you probably um, are aware of the new introduction of the sanitary and phytosanitary uh, restrictions at its borders to control imports of animal, animal, sorry, plants and all products derived from them. All of these um, have been uh, tightened since January 2024. So just wanted to ask a question, how many of you are um, trading with UK? Is there anyone here that is trading with UK? Yeah, okay. I Buenos días. Nosotros exportamos desde hace muchísimos años. Tenemos dos distribuidores en, en Reino Unido y exportamos jamón curado. Um, a partir del Brexit, bueno, como estábamos acostumbrados a exportar a terceros países, pues bueno, fue como un paso más. Um, y además para nosotros subió la venta mucho porque nos empezamos a quedar menos cada vez. Ahora desde enero, sabes que nueva regulación sanitaria uh -huh. y ha sido horrible. Estoy diciendo que ahora mismo a nivel sanitario para nosotros... Um, exportar a, a Reino Unido es como mandar jamones a Corea del Sur, más o menos. Ha sido una cosa de complicada. Uh, uh, unfortunately, yeah, the beginnings are always difficult, isn't it? So they, they are not putting it easy to anyone. No, no, pero a ver, um, nosotros nos empeñamos y como somos muy cabezones, porque el certificado sanitario que han diseñado tiene 14 páginas, de las cuales 7 se dedican a explicar cómo rellenar las otras 7. <laughs> that, 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 that's something that the UK are um, somehow doing well. The same as uh, I was interested to, to, to hear Mireya about all this guidance of the UK government, be, uh, sorry, um, Chinese government, because this is something that the UK government are, are doing pretty well now. So there's so many hundreds and hundreds of guidance in every single point. But I mean, do they expect everybody to be reading? I mean, some of them, they, they, they don't even know that they exist. But it's interesting to go to the government um, website and find yeah. all this guidance sí, of sí. things. Yo me he escuchado todas las webinars, he gastado el, el gobierno, o sea, sí es verdad que han, han dado muchas conferencias para explicarlo y tal. Bueno, nosotros hemos But conseguido entrar ya eh, con el primer certificado y yo lo único que espero que esto nos quite competencia. <laughs> I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure that it will. So well done for being there because I think hopefully you are <laughs> positioned in the right direction. So yeah, so in, in, overall, um, there have been and there will be changes, and such as changes in the customs procedures, tariffs, and regulatory checks at the borders. So adjusting can lead to delays and disruptions in, in trade flows, which in turn obviously will increase costs. You obviously were affected by all of that, so probably the time spent obviously is costly. So yeah, just the time having to go and watch seminar, um, webinars and things like that is just, just costing to you. Um, recommendations, I mean, I'll, I'll say, as you mentioned, obviously the main thing is to familiarize with, uh, with the new processes, uh, submitting the new um, customs declarations, classifying the goods correctly, and following the safety and, and security requirements. Um, and the second point I wanted to speak about is the rules of origin and tariffs, uh, because it was agreed with the TCA that there would be no tariffs or quarters on the movements on goods between the UK and EU. However, uh, that depends on the meeting, the meeting of the amount of, uh, of contents required. So uh, for an exporter to, to qualify for tariff-free uh, trade under the TCA terms, it must have either been wholly obtained uh, or, or been subjected to a very large amount of processes within the EU or UK. So basically, if your business model is to bring goods like shoes from China and um, try to sell them from the UK to all, all Europe, obviously you will be uh, levied twice. Um, so those businesses obviously are not, um, they are repositioning themselves most likely to, to, the, to the EU after that, because no worth for them to operate really. Um, and the rules of origin, obviously all, there might be some 
some products that are really easy to to know where where they're coming from. If you're talking about Spanish paella or you're talking about the um, uh, Avadi mangoes beef, you know you obviously know that they're coming from your own country. But um, so so it's, it's very important for uh, businesses to um, determine the origin of the goods and and recording that accurate accurately um, to in order to to basically benefit from these uh, tariff preferences. So um, the recommendations basically for the, to avoid um, disruptions in this, uh, in this uh, point, um, the, the rules of oranges are uh, product specifics and uh, compliance can be very onerous. So the submitting the customs declarations can be also very complex. So although obviously the companies can uh, classify themselves the goods, um, sometimes it can be difficult. So in doubt, recommendation really would be to use a customs intermediary uh, who can do that on your behalf and avoid any problems when recording classifications of goods and, and origin. In relation to services and digital trade, uh, the TCA contains um, non-discrimination obligations between the parties for UK and EU suppliers of services. However, there is no longer free movement services or free movements of labor. Um, the UK services providers um, have, be, have basically lost the automatic right to offer services across the EU and they will have to comply with the host's um, rules in each a specific member state. As some of the companies obviously had to establish themselves in those uh, member states if they wanted to operate because it would be much easier for them. This also, this, um, also puts an end on the mutual recognitions of uh, professional qualifications in some areas. Um, if you want to operate somewhere else, you might need to have your qualifications um, um, recognize in another member state. So you as a company basically need to take actions ensuring the smooth transaction for cross-border services provisions and bear in mind the, the, the host's laws and regulations. Um, that also, what, what you said about data protection, data security and all of that also needs to come into place in here um, because you know it's important to to have your data secured if you are in um, trade in different countries and services in different countries. Well, the last point I wanted to um, discuss is the, the visa requirements because this is, uh, is sometimes overlooked and uh, I've got lots of calls from people that didn't know uh, the how to apply. They, know, they think that they can just go to the UK now and, and just work. So oh, I just go in for a couple of days. So it's just a, a small project. And um, so uh, unfortunately, there have been significant changes um, in the UK. Uh, and from 1st of January 2021, there is, an, there is now a points-based system in place. And so you employ, if you're in the UK, uh, you employ, if you're employing um, skilled workers, then uh, you will need to consider the, the requirements and the criteria. Skilled workers um, are generally people that ha have qualifications of, uh, from A-level, so A-level uh, qualifications, which is kind of the bachillerato in, in Spain. So that would be the, the, the ones that would need more, you know, that they are, they're basically allowing them to, to come to the UK, uh, but there are some requirements. Some of them, um, they must be able to show that they work as an approved sponsor. So not every com company in the UK can basically employ uh, people from, from abroad. They need to have, need to be a home office uh, licensed sponsor. Um, you must demonstrate that they, you have been offered a job in the correct skill level. So you need to demonstrate what your qualifications are, to make sure that you are uh, the correct person for that, for that job and uh, the worker needs to be uh, speak fluent English as well. Once that all these criteria is satisfied, there's still more points, more, 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 yeah, more points that will give you advantage and um, increase your possibilities of um, getting the, 
the visa, and that would be based on the worker's salary, education level, and whether the job occupation is in shortage. As an example, uh, you get points if your salary is going to be over 25,600, you get 20 points. Um, you get um, 10 points, this is between 23,040 and 25,600. But if your salary is below 23,039 pounds, then you won't ha have any points. So, I mean, it's, I think the recommendations here are pretty obvious. So, um, when you're traveling to, to work uh, for work purposes or you are sending some uh, workers to the UK, make sure that they have the right visa or the work permit and apply for it. And if you are based in the UK and you're employing people from overseas, just so you have a subsidiary or something, so then make sure that you're a home um, office licensed sponsor um, under the, the UK. Um, new points based immigration rules. I just wanted to touch a little bit on new changes and proposals uh, proposals in 2024. Um, the, the first one is the new critical imports and supply chains strategy and um, after hearing Mireya as well, uh, it seems that lots of countries are uh, doing supply chain strategies um, and I suppose that all of them will be, be considering uh, all what happened. Um, the, the new critical imports and supply chain strategy just, just came into um, it's a white paper, I think it was just January this year, and uh, it's basically a response of the recent economic um, shocks to supply chains, COVID pandemic, Russia's inv invasion of Ukraine, and when I saw Angel's um, wall map yesterday here, I thought, God, I should have that in here because that shows all the difficulties that the wall, <laughs> all the all the disasters and things like that. That's kind of um, what they realized that this could happen. Um, we need to do something about it. And um, this uh, strategy is basically aimed at in, um, influ in, sorry, improving the, the flow and access and quality of information surrounding the supply of critical goods. Uh, so so what, what are critical goods? Because you think, well, you know, is my product going to be considered a critical good? Well, critical goods are considered to be medicines, minerals, and semiconductors. So if you are within, um, your business is within one of these products, um, you could probably um, consider the, the strategy and, and, and hopefully the changes that the government is going to make to, to help these businesses um, supplying these uh, um, goods will benefit you as well. There are um, five priority areas in this strategy um, as a summary, you know, you've got them more or less in there, but summary is basically the government is a central point of um, all information on supply chains. It's going to share information with business chain and international partnerships and uh, working very basically very close to bus businesses to understand their challenges and um, develop, developing and implementing solutions. So basically on a pl practical level, the UK government will aim to um, set up an online business portal where business can basically report there are any red tapes, any, any disruptions. Um, so, so basically, the, the government could consider help in the, in the in those points, and also it's very likely that there will be more uh, free trade agreements um, to remove uh, trade barriers and tariffs. Really? Okay, just go through <laughs> quickly with them. Um, so okay. you are enth enthusiastic of UK, I know. <laughs> Well, okay, yes. well, I'm just yes, going to uh, touch quickly. One minute okay. to make a, I'll a quick summary. I'll go quickly through the border uh, target operation model. Um, actually, that's the one that I want to speak more about, but never mind. Um, as you know, there have been the introduction of the sanitary and phytosanitary restrictions, uh, the BITUM, um, which is applicable to imports from all countries into the Great Britain from first to 31st of January. Well, basically, there are uh, SPS checks, which I'm basically, I'm not going to go through them because they're there. There's the com documentary controls, the identity control, and um, physical inspections. Let's, uh, just wanted to show you then the next uh, slide so you can see, this is an example basically of uh, 
the, the implementation of BITUM for uh, plants and plants products. You know, the, from January 2024, <coughs> uh, there have been um, the introduction of the SPS checks, removal of premium notification requirements for low risk plants and plant products from the EU. There has also been an introduction of a simplified health certification of imports on medium risk animals, products, plants, plants products, and high risk food for, of non-animal origin. Um, again, the, the, the businesses are um, responsible for the correct category of these goods, so that's something that you need to check your own product to see which category, whether it's low risk, medium risk, high risk. From the 30th of April, again, this introduction of um, uh, phys physical and uh, identical and physical checks in some of the goods. Um, and just briefly, well, I'm sorry, an introduction of um, high risk plants and plant products uh, that must come from the border control post or control point. So there will be the introduction of border control post or control points. So checks will be. And just very quickly then, on the um, 31st of uh, October, there will be the introduction of uh, the safety and security declarations for imports into, the, into Great Britain, and also the introduction of a single online business portal. Just very quickly, just because uh, this is, will be very important for all of you, because you will start hearing about the single trade window, the STW. Uh, it is basically a new portal that the UK government is going to implement and is going to go slowly. Um, it's now been tested with only a few uh, companies, but is going to be implemented in stages, so you will soon hear about it very soon. And just, just to put that one in there, next nice one. Um, Got one more minute, okay. Well, um, basically, as, um, as um, uh, Natalia said, uh, keep an eye on everything, keep an eye on all the new regulations because there will be changes and, and you need to be aware of them. But uh, you know, if you have any questions, let me know. Sorry about it. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's <laughs>